Elliot Murphy says Billy Joel is the best musician he's ever known. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. There's a cool documentary we've been talking about in this series called The Second Act of Elliot Murphy. It basically follows him around and tells us where he's been, where he is, and where he's going. It's really, really well done. There'll be a link in the description of this video where you can pick it up or stream it. One of the good things about this documentary is I was a huge fan of his music in the 70s, then kind of lost track of him in the 80s. This documentary really showed me the full picture of where he'd been. And for him, it started in New York with an old friend named Billy Joel. We go way, way back, Billy Joel, because he's another Long Island guy. Yeah. He's from Long Island. When I was 17, I remember driving in a snowstorm to go see his band, The Hassles, play at some club in the middle. And they started the set. He was not the lead singer, but they started the set with him doing Give Me Some Lovin'. And it was note for note perfect. And Billy Joel, who... I, I really got to know pretty well. He is the most incredible musician, you know, as a piano player. He says he's not good enough to be a concert pianist, but I'm not sure. I mean, he is just, he hears something, he can play it. And he can sing it in that style, too. You know, he's yeah. amazing chameleon. So I knew Billy Joel then, and then when I uh, when I got my deal, I guess it was with Columbia or RCA, I got, I got friends with him again. We star, I opened a bunch of shows for him. I opened the shows in, in Allentown, which he had the famous song, Allentown. Uh, and he played on my third album, Nightlights. He played on one, um, Deco Dance. Hooked up with him again. Uh, my wife and I went to Miami Beach for a little vacation, and Billy has a place up in Palm Beach, and uh, we stopped by and had lunch with him. And he, you know, he's such a sweet guy, but he is just... He may be, if you're just talking about musical chops, the best musician I ever met, I must say. One thing I like about Billy Joel is, and it's rare when you get an artist that has been doing it, let's just say for like you, a long time, comfortable in their skin, you either have an artist, and you know this already, I'm overstating the obvious, that is very careful in what they say, or else you'll get a guy like Billy Joel, whom Billy, Billy will just speak his mind. I think he's always been that way as long as I've known him. He's never pulled his punches about anything. He's, he kind of says what's, right, what's on his mind. He's, uh, yeah. Billy Joel, do you understand, as a friend of Billy Joel, I mean, Billy Joel not long ago said, I, I, I've got new songs in my head. And I just went crazy. I just, I'm on my typewriter writing this thing, and he said, I'm not going to record them. And I'm going, what the, you, what is that? Because, I mean, the thing, the thing about Billy Joel is, like, he says, well, I don't, I don't have uh, nothing. I don't know how he put it. He says, if I get excited about something, maybe I'll record again, maybe not. Mm. And that's, this is going back to 93. So, mm. But knowing him, do you understand? Are you surprised that Billy Joel is the type of guy who would say, no, nah, I'm okay with that. I'm going to walk away from that side of my life. I saw Billy play in Frankfurt, Germany last year it was after he, he was in the movie and i kind of wanted to go i hadn't seen him in years wanted to go see him and say hello and thank him for that and i saw him play in frankfurt germany and he played in a huge stadium i mean it was fifty thousand. and he played all those songs it was like they were out yesterday with the audience reaction yeah i mean you did not get the sense this was an oldie show in any way so Maybe in that sense, he doesn't feel the need, you know. Uh, I do know I write slower now than I used in the beginning. You know, in the beginning, you're writing songs. It's all about your hope and dreams. And then you get at this point, and it's more about your experience and regrets. Yeah. <laughs> takes over. So uh, I do understand that. I'm, sh But God, he's doing so well with the catalog he's got. And he did write a lot of songs. He did. He wrote a lot of songs. So, you know, I've written about, I don't know, 300 songs, I suppose. 300, 350 songs. I think uh, Bob Dylan has probably wrote 500 songs. I've heard something like that. Interestingly, at one point, Elliot Murphy left music, believe it or not, to go into law. That point, my lowest point came about, I guess, in the mid 80s. Uh, I re It was the best point in my life and the worst point in my life. You know, I stopped all my bad habits all at once uh i uh and i nothing was happening in america and there wasn't enough quite happening in europe yet to make them move and i said you know maybe this is just not my destiny 
and I, I got a job in a law firm. It was a music business law firm in New York City. And uh, I was gonna be, I went back to school, I got a degree because I was gonna become a lawyer. And I remember I was sitting, I worked outside of a litigator, but he, he was mostly music business clients all around him. And one day one of the lawyers comes over to me and he says, listen, a lot of my clients are coming in here and they're saying to me that there's this secretary over there, legal secretary who looks just like this singer songwriter, Elliot Murphy. And I say, yeah, that's me. And he said, uh, what are you doing here? And I said, well, things got kind of tough. And uh, I'm thinking of becoming a lawyer. And he looked at me and said, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that, my time working as in the law firm there was fantastic because I learned so much about contracts and music yeah. law. You know, I've, I've kind of been a one-man management show ever since. Yeah. Uh, the week I got there, they switched from typewriters to computers and sent me to school to learn all about that. So, and I was doing when I would do my tours in Europe, I would communicate with the promoters with the, via their telex. If anyone remembers what that yeah. is, a telex yeah. machine that's pre-fax, yeah, pre-email. So you know, it was one of those things that it seemed very the end of music for me, but it turned out to be the beginning of this whole second act, I yeah. guess, as they talk about in the film. For more information on Elliot Murphy, his website's easy. It's ElliotMurphy.com. He has a great documentary, as we've mentioned, called The Second Act of Elliot Murphy, which shows you the full scope of, well, where it was in the beginning and all the high hopes and how things went wrong and how he's doing really well living in Paris now. We'll have links in the description of this video where you can either stream it or buy it. You can actually buy it on his website as well. Share our videos. We love it when you share our videos. Subscribe to our channel. We need you. And make sure you comment because we always read the comments. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.